Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for uh, joining back. Uh, very warm welcome to you all for this uh, the final session of IVCET 2020. Yes, this is the time for uh, the curtain marching towards the end of this uh, IVCET. I extend a very warm welcome once again to you all. Uh, we are so delighted to have you back after having enthusiastic and innovative presentations. Really, we are so happy to have you back again. A great author, Max Lucado says, our prayers may be awkward, our attempts may be feeble, but since the power of prayer is the one who hears it and not in the one who says it, our prayers do make a difference. With a prayerful heart, let us listen to the prayer song. occasion, no matter big or small, inviting words are so big, encouraging and enchanting. May the excitement of today enthuse you, may its excitement surround you, and may the fellowship that we share create happy memories and smiling magical moments. Now I request the organizing secretary of this international conference, Dr. Gayatri, to welcome the gathering. The basics of opportunity God Almighty, for the wonderful uh, International Virtual Conference held today. I welcome all the dignitaries for this auditory ceremony. I welcome Dr. Patricia sir, our supporter, for this occasion. I welcome you, sir. And I welcome Dr. Rajkumar, sir, our motivator for this auditory function. I welcome you, sir. And I welcome Dr. Sobel, sir, our pillar for this ceremony, sir. I welcome you. And I welcome Dr. Rajakumar Murgesan, sir, Faculty of Innovation and Technology, 
Kailas University Malaysia. I welcome you, sir. And I welcome all my dear colleagues for this occasion. I welcome you all. To take this opportunity, welcome all our scholars uh, available there. I welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your uh, crisp and short and sweet uh, welcome address. And this is the time to see the visible result of our uh, international conference. <coughs> Uh, the, this is the time for uh, releasing the proceedings of our conference. Now I request uh, Dr. J.T.R. Satya Silan, sir, uh, the head overall coordinator of uh, CAIT and Computer Science, uh, Dean of uh, Student and Staff Welfare, to release the proceedings. And also I request uh, Dr. Rajkumar, sir, to receive the proceedings of this international conference. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Anthony is saying expiring tape. If you want to build a ship, don't drum up the men to gather wood. Divide the work and give orders. Instead, teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. A leader needs to understand the motivations. Be positive, generous, and open minded. I invite one such leader, Dr. JGR Satyasilan, sir, head department of computer science and coordinator of all the wings of CS and the dean of staff and student welfare to deliver the presidential address. Esteemed chief guest of uh, today's valedictory function of uh, the international virtual conference on emerging trends and computing which is thoughtfully organized by the Department of uh, Computer Science, Shift 2. Dr. Raja Kumar Murugesan, who has uh, come over here to give the valid address. Dr. K. Rajkumar, who is also with us right now, who has just now received uh, the proceedings of uh, today's uh, conference uh, proceedings, who is the head of data science, beloved head of the department, Dr. Soma Smiles, who is the convener of uh, today's conference and uh, the organizing secretary, Dr. P. Gayatri, all other faculty members who are gathered here, who are responsible for organizing this international virtual conference, and all the research scholars who have taken part in this conference and by their various participants from different parts of the world, <coughs> it gives us all great pleasure to conclude and complete today's wonderful event, which is organized by our department. It is the meet for all the participants who are doing research activities in the domain of computer science. It was wonderful to see the participation from the various participants all over the world, the way they have presented the papers, the way they have delivered their findings, it was so nice. Also, we would like to appreciate the plenary speakers' talks, which helped the people who attended this conference today. Dear participants and the audience, this is a good start for some of you who can also travel further to do your research activities. Computer science is a domain where you can keep on traveling in various branches, starting from 
the soft computing, cloud computing, and uh, the network security and so on. There are a lot of factors. We are able to come across various participations from different participants. So this would definitely help the younger generation to explore the possibilities of finding new ideas in various issues that are involved, which are not explored even now. So I would like to congratulate once again the convener as well as the organizing secretary and all other faculty members who have involved or contributed much on the success of today's conference. Also, I'd like to thank Almighty for the blessings that we have received today. It is also the management who has given much support for conducting this conference in a successful manner. Once again, I take this opportunity to congratulate and uh, I wish all the organizing team was taken the pain to conduct successfully this conference. I hope this conference would give a spark to all the participants to travel further in their research journey. With this note, I would like to conclude my presidential office, try to attend more such conferences which are organized by our department and enrich your knowledge. With this note, I would like to conclude. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you, sir, for your thought-provoking, motivating and encouraging words. A great personality named John C. Maxwell says, a leader must be close enough to relate to others, but far enough ahead to motivate them. So such a personality is Dr. K. Rajkumar, sir, the head department of data science and the dean of uh, international relations. Sir, I invite you to offer the words of felicitations. Thank you, sir, for your nice words. I'm very grateful about you. So it's so great to be here this evening and to address uh, all of you uh, who have uh, presented the papers and uh, the chief guest of today's evening uh, from Taylor University, Dr. Raja Kumar Murugeshan. So I need to be a little bit cautious when I utter your name. Uh, as my name is Raj Kumar, and uh, I used to say quite often like my name, but you are like almost 98 percentage of uh, uh, name uh, letters which are common to both of us. So so happy, Dr. Raja Kumar Murugeshan. So thank you so much for. Being with us uh, and agreeing to be here this evening to deliver a the address. And Taylor's University is a great university and uh, one of the most popular universities in Malaysia. And uh, I have a couple of friends over there, and I'll tell you offline later due to wanting time uh, uh, the way Taylor's University is associated uh, with uh, some of our friends uh, in other places. Uh, and also uh, respected. Uh, uh, Satish Sir, uh, who is head of the Department of Computer Science and uh, coordinator of all uh, computer science programs and the staff and students' welfare, uh, respected uh, uh, head of the department, uh, Dr. Sobers, who is the convener of this uh, very uh, popular uh, conference, uh, uh, International Virtual Conference on Emerging Technologies, and their Gayatri, organizing secretary, and all the organizing uh, team. Uh, from uh, computer science department of our college. So very great to see everyone. And also I can uh, see very varied uh, intellectuals from uh, different uh, countries, different states uh, who have uh, helped us to uh, scrutinize papers as part of the uh, paper review committee and advisory committee and uh, sharing various sessions. It's a very great, uh, great deal of work. It's not easy to be a session chair. I could see more than uh, 10 different uh, experts uh, who have helped us in uh, uh, conducting uh, the sessions and then reviewing all the papers. So, so thank you so much. And uh, it needs a lot of uh, effort and patience to be here and to act as a session chair. It's a very deal of hard work. And also all the participants from uh, various countries. And I could see many papers coming from Middle East, uh, uh, countries and uh, different states of India and also 
and Tamil Nadu. And uh, thank you all for uh, having faith in uh, Bishop Eagle College and also having faith in uh, the conference. Even though the conference was organized in a very short span of time, uh, you, have, uh, you have had a lot of faith among us and then uh, that made you to submit your papers for our conference. So when I just uh, contacted uh, Agnesi Secretary, and it was more than uh, 60 papers, and uh, it's, it's not uh, easy. A lot of big conferences, even they don't even uh, select uh, 60 papers, they will restrict. Okay. But uh, we had a very great lineup of uh, papers coming from various uh, domains. When I looked at uh, the topics of coverage of the conference, I was really impressed with uh, the lineup of topics that uh, the organizing team uh, have included. I could see various very interesting uh, topics ranging from RPA, uh, machine learning, data mining, and then cloud everywhere, and uh, artificial intelligence. So when I say, when I look at these different uh, topics, they are very hot. They are the need of the right present hour because the way the uh, computing has uh, improved is quite amazing. Those days have gone where we all had a procedural computing, a procedural programming. So when I say what is procedural programming is a way of doing computation. That means you are given a problem and then you identify steps one at a time and write your algorithm and then you follow algorithmic steps one after another. So you can't execute the step two before executing step one. So you need to solve step three, only then we can solve step four. So that is the way uh, procedural programming has been carried out over decades. But when I look at, when you all look at the way programming is going on presently, it's quite completely different. Nobody is doing procedural programming. Nobody is doing about algorithms. Nobody is doing about procedures. So you might wonder what's happening right now. We are not following any procedural programming paradigm. So there's a complete paradigm shift from procedural programming. And then we had object-oriented programming and presently, will, uh, the scenario is completely changed. Now, it's completely is called the data programming. So, nothing, no procedure is required, no algorithmic steps are required, only uh, you need only a bunch of data. And the way you are going to uh, write your code such a way that your code learns from data. And that is the amazing thing about uh, the current. Uh, uh, scenario in IT industries. How IT industry now they are just scratching their head. How to incorporate this data programming? How to move away from procedural programming into data programming? So how to enable our uh, uh, computers to learn themselves? And that is not the end of the story. The story goes beyond to that. That is called uh, RPA, robotic process automation. And uh, I would be happy to see. Uh, some of you who have uh, presented the papers in RPA, and I hope you know that what is the blue prism, okay, a very popular uh, uh, RPA software, okay, and uh, UI Path is another very popular RPA programming software, okay. So those days have gone where only you educate your robots. Now you want to educate your computers, you want to educate program, and that is the idea behind the RPA. So you want program to learn themselves, to manage themselves, like how robots replace human beings and then they manage themselves. So quite lineup of great topics that uh, the organizing team has covered for this conference. So very amazing uh, to see such a team of uh, young faculty members from the Department of Computer Science uh, who have spent uh, tireless evenings, late nights to conduct uh, such a great conference. It might look like a very simple conference, but at the background, it requires a lot of planning, right? From uh, advertisement, marketing, um, website updates, and then collecting papers and reviewing papers, uh, getting in touch with authors. So you might see uh, like uh, every author has a lot of questions themselves. So they have to keep asking us questions, okay? Even in late evenings, late nights, or WhatsApp, okay? All those different media. So we need to be patient enough to answer all the questions. So conducting conference is, is not an easy task, but it's a very, very tough task. But also conducting conference in virtual mode, again, it takes a lot of planning. And uh, I thank uh, Dr. Sobers, Dr. Gayatri, and all other faculty members who have spent their efforts to conduct this great conference. 
And not only that, uh, I wish this uh, conference to move beyond the 2020. I wish to see the conference uh, IEC uh, ET 2021 uh, in the year 2021. I hope they are all doing a lot of uh, planning to just continue this conference edition uh, beyond 2020, like 2021, 2022, and why not? And we want to see 10th edition of the conference, uh, 20th edition of the conference. So I, I'm very sure that uh, the conference uh, organizing team uh, has all the required skills and then abilities to continue the conference, to sustain the conference in uh, future years. And also I wish the conference team to set up uh, uh, a Facebook page exclusively, LinkedIn page exclusively, so that all the authors to continue their discussions offline uh, throughout the year. I wish all the authors to be brand ambassador for our conference for uh, 2021 edition. I wish all of you to help us in reviewing papers. I wish all of you to be part of the technical review committee. So all 62 authors, so I wish you to help us back for the 2021 edition as a technical uh, program committee members. So you would help us to review uh, papers of your expertise. And uh, I want the conference to spread its wings, uh, not to restrict uh, the journals that we borrowed from uh, other publishers. Uh, today morning, Dr. Service was narrating uh, to revive the journal that has been uh, suspended for a few years. And hopefully the journal will help us to again to attract more uh, uh, participants, more authors, okay, uh, from uh, not only from India but also from other countries. And I want the website to be uh, alive. So I want uh, the conference uh, organizing team to ensure that the website is alive throughout the year, and uh, so that uh, it will help us to attract more people uh, uh, beyond uh, the conference time. And many people will be in touch with uh, everyone, uh, every uh, authors, and also among the organizing team. So, without taking much uh, time, I thank uh, the organizing secretary, I thank the convener, Dr. Sobers, and I thank our principal and our management for always uh, helping us whenever we conduct any sort of events. Uh, they support us uh, so that uh, we would be able to do all the innovative things. Uh, in the months ahead. And uh, with these few words, thank you once again. Have a good evening. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, felicitation from uh, inputs. So you give us a lot of inputs. And uh, be sure that we will continue, as per your words, we will continue uh, 2021 22. I will be going up to 20th, after 20th, also, we will be planning to continue this session. And also, with the support of the IP, we will be uh, keep the website alive. Thank you for your input, sir. Thank you, sir. A great man says, let us always concentrating on improvement to learning and experiences. It gives me joy and honor to introduce the chief guest of the day, Dr. Rajakumar Murgesan. Dr. Rajakumar Murgesan, uh, he is an associate professor of computer science and head of research for the Faculty of Innovation and Technology at uh, uh, Taylor's University, Malaysia. Uh, he has completed uh, his PhD in Advanced Computer Networks uh, at the University of Saints, Malaysia. And uh, he is having more than 28 years of experience as educator. Uh, his research interests include a, a variety of uh, uh, technical uh, area, IPv6, future internet, internet governance, computer networks, network security, IoT, blockchain, machine, machine learning, and effective computing. Uh, he is also a member of uh, various uh, professional bodies like IEEE, IEEE Communication Society, Internet Society associated with the IEEE Forum, uh, Asia Pacific Advanced Network Group, Internet2, and uh, Malaysian Network Operator Group members community. And he has given uh, several invited talks and presentations at various international events, and he is an uh, active researcher also. So now I invite Dr. Rajkumar Murugesan. To take over the session, sir. Sir, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the uh, introduction. So glad to be here. Uh, respected uh, JGR uh, Satish Silan, conference chair, the other conference chairs, uh, Dr. B. Rajkumar, Rajkumar, Dr. G. Uh, Sobas, 
also the convener and uh, the organizing secretary, Dr. B. Gayatri, the uh, entire organizing team, uh, fellow academics, researchers, research scholars, and uh, postgraduate students. So, good evening to all of you. So, I mean, uh, I heard uh, that you had a wonderful session and uh, there were about 60 papers lined up. And uh, when I heard from Dr. Rajkumar, so I saw, I mean, I heard most of the papers were uh, on the uh, emerging trends in uh, computer science today and for the near future. Um, I thank the organizing committee, the entire organizing committee uh, for this invitation. And uh, let me share my slides. Yes, sir, please share your screen, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, my talk is to give the uh, validity address. So, trying to connect uh, the emerging trends in computing uh, today tomorrow with the uh, digital transformation. So how these uh, emerging trends and computing are uh, uh, transforming the world today. So today uh, we are talking about uh, AI, machine learning, uh, robotic process automation, big data, AR, VR, cybersecurity, and all that. And uh, all these changes have made, uh, are making a profound uh, impact that uh, they are going to have a socio-economic impact in terms of uh, governance, in terms of business, as well as in terms of uh, how you know, uh, we are going to live and communicate with the world. So we have gone through uh, uh, three uh, eras in terms of computing. We started with the uh, Polarith uh, cards, or Polarith computing. So we used uh, punch cards, what was in the early uh, 1890s or early uh, 19th century. So we call that as uh, tabulating computing, where uh, computers with the help of uh, uh, punch cards were used to count uh, numbers. So the first Polarith card we know in terms of history that was used in the uh, US in the 1890s for their uh, census, US census. Then we moved to uh, programmable computing in the early 60s. So where we used, uh, like what Dr. V. Rajkumar said in his, uh, mentioned in his uh, speech just now. So in uh, programmable computing, we use three, the three, three basic constructs of computing or the three basic building blocks of computing that is sequence, selection, and repetition. So selection, we all know, whether, whether it is whatever the programming language is, uh, we use only these three building blocks. And for selection, for example, we may use uh, if then else, if some condition satisfied, then some action or some steps. So we can't be uh, depending upon these uh, uh, three uh, uh, basic constructs. So which is very deterministic. So we have to have uh, smart computers. So in the uh, later 2010, uh, computing evolved into something called as uh, cognitive computing. So cognitive computing is, uh, you know, is actually an umbrella term. It uh, combines uh, AI or it uses AI, it uses machine learning, uh, it uses image uh, recognition or image processing. It also uses advanced analytics, big data, all that where uh, computers uh, assist uh, humans uh, in problem solving. 
And uh, cognitive computing is beyond uh, AI, where uh, there is iterative uh, learning process. So, so we shall see shortly uh, more about uh, cognitive computing. So, uh, uh, this 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 technology uh, evolution uh, has been over decades. But recently, what has happened is there is there has been a surge surge in terms of uh, technological developments that has uh, called or being called as disruptive computing or uh, transformation uh, technologies. Transformation technology is better because um, it actually uh, enhances the way of living and it's, it's for the uh, betterment of uh, people or the community or the society. And uh, we also know that uh, uh, today uh, there is exponential growth of data. And uh, we look at the, uh, the size of data that is being uh, churned out every day. It is uh, very hard to comprehend. Comprehend means uh, very hard to understand. Are we producing so much of data uh, on a day-to-day -day basis? So for example, we produce about uh, 500 uh, uh, million tweaks on a day for petabytes of uh, uh, images or pictures on Facebook and uh, about 3.9 billion uh, people send emails and uh, 294 billion uh, emails are sent every day and there are about 4 terabytes of data produced by a connected car about 65 uh, billion uh, uh, WhatsApp messages are being sent every day and uh, 28 petabytes of data are produced by uh, wearable devices and about uh, 95 million uh, Instagram messages are being sent. And it is estimated that about 463 uh, exabytes of data will be churned out every day by 2025. See, see the, uh, later you can click this link so you'll be able to see a, a zoomed uh, image of this so you can see the finer details. So, so see the, the, the large amount of data that will be produced on a daily basis uh, by 2025. This is only an estimation. We don't know when we hit 2025, the, uh, the actual amount of data that will be produced much be, will be much more, much more bigger. So we have moved from uh, talking about terabytes of data to uh, yottabytes of data, which is about 10 power 24. So what does all have to do uh, with the uh, technology or the emerging trends? So all these are, uh, what is the enablers? Uh, or the, yeah, all these are enablers that have resulted in uh, the emerging trends of technology that we are talking about today. So there are uh, different prospects so of the technological change uh, in terms of the uh, exponential growth. Because recently we are seeing a, a surge in terms of technological uh, development. So, so there are two perspectives uh, of looking at the uh, pace at which this technological change is happening. So Ray Kurzweil, Ray Kurzweil is a futurist and uh, is also a technologist. He, he gives a lot of talks on um, optical character recognition, image processing, uh, text to uh, speech or speech to text synthesis and all that. So in his uh, uh, book, when uh, humans transcend uh, biology, he uses the word uh, singularity. And he says that singularity is near when humans uh, transcend uh, biology. So what this means is uh, human brain and uh, network of computers will work as one. And uh, using his uh, uh, law of, uh, using his own law, uh, what he says is uh, he predicts that uh, this singularity will emerge by 2050, somewhere here. It will happen at uh, 2050. So, so what this means is once singularity has been reached, machine intelligence will be infinitely more powerful that all human intelligence combined. And uh, based on this argument, so he also says that more advanced societies can move faster 
than less advanced societies. And uh, another argument based on this theory is we are moving from a path from narrow intelligence to uh, general intelligence. And, and we are seeing that uh, happening today. So today we are, we are here, uh, narrow AI and uh, broad AI in terms of developments uh, on AI. So narrow AI is, narrow AI is about single task, single domain, and it requires a large amount of data. So we, we normally, we know that. So we use a large amount of training set of data when we uh, make the algorithm to learn. And broad AI is uh, about multitask, multi-domain, and uh, trusted AI capable of learning with less data. And actually, this is happening now, and uh, they are looking at uh, this as the near future. And by 2050, they are looking beyond general AI. They call it as, uh, uh, we have a beautiful term, super AI. So the general AI is going to be uh, cross-domain learning and reasoning where uh, the system will have capabilities in terms of broad autonomy with uh, moral reasoning. So today they're talking about, uh, because of this robotics, uh, they are talking about uh, ethical AI and all that. So, so the uh, AI uh, in the near future or the far future will have uh, you know, more autonomy. It can self-learn. A lot of self-learning happens today itself. There are a lot of uh, robots that can self-learn, uh, looking at the surroundings, looking at the environment and all that. It also can interact with the human components. And uh, that's why the broad autonomy uh, with moral reasoning comes. So um, this is one, uh, one perspective in terms of uh, uh, the technological change that is happening. And uh, the other perspective is by uh, uh, Sir Roger Andrews. Sir so Roger Penrose is a, a, a mathematical physicist and uh, he's a Nobel laureate in physics as well. And what he says is he, he actually disputes uh, uh, the outcome in terms of uh, measure intelligence that is mentioned by uh, uh, Ray Kurzweil. So what he says is uh, consciousness, consciousness is not algorithmic, meaning it cannot be uh, modeled with the help of Turing machine or any digital computers today. So what is actually, uh, I mean, he tries to explain this by saying that uh, human brain or uh, a human mind would have invented um, the computers. But the same human mind have not invented the computer, you know, that can invent a, a human mind. So, he only disputes the, uh, uh, the uh, statement of uh, or statement or argument or outcome in terms of singularity uh, mentioned by uh, Ray's Griswold. But he doesn't dispute about the uh, evolution today and uh, the impact of technology today. So what these two uh, different opinions have to uh, do with our discussion today? So we, even though there may be two uh, different opinions, but uh, we can see that uh, what Kurzweil has mentioned is happening because we are already, uh, we are already here. We are already here and a lot of developments are already happening uh, in terms of general AI. That's what cognitive computing and all comes into, RPA comes into. And uh, again, we can't dispute that uh, uh, as of today, even though you know, uh, human minds have uh, developed computers, but they haven't developed a computer that can develop a human mind. So, uh, different opinions, but the uh, question uh, that uh, stands before us is how we as a society will be adapting to this change. Because the change happening is uh, you know, exponential. So, technology comes with a, with a purpose. So, if you look at uh, historically uh, or historical perspective, technology change is nothing new. So we have gone through a lot of technological changes and we as a society, we also have adapted well with the uh, technological uh, changes. And uh, if you look again at history, all this technological change came with a purpose for doing something uh, cheaper, faster and better. And what we, in generic terms, we say, layman terms, we say today is for the betterment of lives. Actually, technology today has uh, you know, uh, bettered uh, our way of life and our way of uh, living as well. So 
you know, for example, our retirement age has been increased in many countries. So the reason is uh, our life has been prolonged without much of physical activity. All is because of this technological change. Okay. So uh, due to this technological change, we can see uh, there is a technological transformation. Technological transformation or digital transformation can be uh, treated synonymously here. So using these technologies, um, uh, uh, organizations or people want to make a change to the process to become more effective or, or efficient. So the intention could be uh, to deliver value to, to customers or to change uh, the competitive landscape and the economics of the uh, market. So we can call this as uh, uh, business dynamics. So, so you, may, you may wonder why we are talking about business and economics here. So today uh, we all say there is no, no free lunch. So everything is with a purpose, right? So all these technological change, even though we say it comes with a purpose, does it bring value to the people, to the community, to the society, as well as to the business organization? So when we say uh, uh, technological change, so we are not talking about uh, merely changing an existing service. So what happened uh, several decades back, uh, several decades back, when we went for automation. So automation was merely uh, converting a manual process with the help of uh, machines. So when we, when, we, when we said that, we actually mean that, uh, you know, we want to use machines for uh, repetitive tasks. But now things have changed, things have evolved. We want the computers to be smart, so that it can interact and it can support, uh, you know, uh, it can interact with people and it can support in problem solving or decision making. So, the, when we talk about change, the change must be something significantly better. The significance has to be emphasized here. So uh, we can use many technologies, or many technologies are being used today for this uh, digital transformation to happen. So and I, 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 I'm sure I heard uh, you know, papers have been presented on AI, machine learning, RPA. I don't know about cognitive computing, but also about IoT, big data, edge computing, blockchain, cybersecurity. I'm not sure whether any papers were present on VR and AR. But all these um, are the, uh, what is a prominent uh, technologies today that are disrupting the world or uh, making uh, you know, this digital transformation uh, possible. So when we talk about uh, uh, digital transformation, there are four types of digital transformation. So the first one is uh, business process transformation. So uh, the intention of the uh, business process transformation is to uh, lower cost, reducing uh, cycle times, or increasing uh, quality. So uh, gone are the days, uh, you know, uh, from saying, uh, you know, what will be the delivery time for a product or a service. So we call, uh, I mean, we mentioned SOP and all that, standard operating procedures and uh, delivery timeline and all that. So today it has moved from uh, delivery timeline to uh, time to value, time to market, time to value. So time to market means how much of time uh, it takes for a product or a service to hit the market and time to value is after hitting the market, how much of time it takes to bring value to the organization. That is, that is more important. So this is where the, the intention of uh, today's business process transformation is where People are also using RPA to, uh, you know, to facilitate this business process transformation. So only one tool is RPA, there are many others. And uh, one simple example is uh, 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 Domino's uh, Pizza. So what Domino's did was, uh, we all know uh, quite some time back, uh, Pizza Hut used to rule the uh, pizza market. And uh, when Domino's came into the market, uh, pizza was still dominant. Pizza was uh, still uh, dominant. Um, so what happened was uh, uh, Domino's they developed this app called as Anywhere. So later, when you're connected to the internet, you can you can check uh, uh, this app, and you can see you can uh, use uh, text or voice and any device to uh, to connect to this app. I mean, to connect to this app, and you can uh, order the pizzas.
Dear participants, please wait uh, as the resource person is having some technical issue. We will be joining very shortly. So please be patient. Sorry, uh, sorry for the uh, for the technical uh, hiccup. Yes, sir. It's okay, sir. You can proceed, sir. Yeah, sorry. There was a small interruption here with the power. So okay. I, I was logged out from the computer. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, just just hold on. Yeah. Can you can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So uh, if, if you look at uh, this Domino's Anywhere app, so you can order through uh, any device and through uh, voice or by text, you can tweet. So what happened was uh, uh, through this business uh, process transformation, Domino's was able to outsmart uh, Pizza Hut in terms of sales. And today we all know across the world, uh, Domino's uh, pizzas are dominant. Um, and the second type of transformation is the business model transformation. So. A complete shift in terms of uh, rethinking in terms of the uh, business model uh, is seen by uh, today's organization. So the intention is to uh, to deliver value, and uh, we have very common examples like uh, Netflix. So how Netflix uh, revolutionized uh, video distribution, you know, and we can watch a movie on the screen. Similarly, how uh, music distribution has been revolutionized by uh, Apple's iTunes. And uh, this all state and Metro Mile is in the US and it's slowly uh, starting to spread across the world as well. So see, for example, uh, car insurance. So we pay uh, the insurance uh, on the early basis. And uh, most of the time the car insurance is, uh, the premium is uh, based on the uh, type of car, the uh, value of the car and the model of the car. Model means the, the year it was bought or the year it was registered for the first time. So uh, the premium is actually uh, fixed and every year the uh, premium amount will reduce uh, based on the, uh, you know, if you have not made any claims. So we call it as uh, no claim, uh, uh, no, no claim uh, benefit or we call it as uh, uh, NCD. Yeah. So what uh, Allstate and Metro Mile does is you, uh, you can actually uh, pay based on mileage. Based on mileage in the sense, for example, uh, most of us were working so morning from home, we may drive to office or drive to university and we drive back only in the evening. So most of the time the car is idle, but we are paying a premium uh, for the entire year, even when the car is idle. So what these uh, insurance companies are thinking is uh, they want to revolutionize the uh, business model by charging the customer only by usage of the car. So, so when the uh, car runs and uh, if it hits an accident, then, uh, you know, you are, the, the company will uh, take the liabilities, the insurance company will take the liabilities. So if you see, so 
this is one simple example. So how companies are uh, you know, trying to uh, value add uh, to the customer. Similarly, uh, uh, the third transformation is domain transformation. Domain transformation is uh, what we used to call it as uh, uh, expanding the uh, business uh, type with an organization. So, uh, so what domain transformation is, is to redefine products in terms of services uh, and by that creating value. So there are many examples. So for example, uh, uh, Amazon uh, Web Services, when they started, they started as an online uh, retail store. But today we know uh, Amazon uh, better than online retail store also as a cloud service provider, right? So uh, when it started, Amazon started as an online retail, retail uh, provider. But what happened was they thought, how can uh, they leverage the uh, infrastructure? They have already invested in, uh, invested in terms of uh, uh, for the online store. And they also had a very large uh, customer bank in terms of online store. So they, they want to take advantage of this uh, infrastructure that they've invested in terms of the online store. At the same time, they also want to benefit out of the big customer bank they had. So what they did was they want to uh, uh, maximize the benefit that they can reap out of the infrastructure, essentially the IT infrastructure. And that's where they extended the existing IT infrastructure to uh, offer the cloud service, which was dominant uh, at the beginning uh, by Microsoft and IBM. Similarly is with Google. So if you go on Google, <laughs> Google means if you go and search in the internet about the uh, number of products that is hosted by Google or the number of companies uh, owned by Google, it will be mind boggling. And we all know Google started as a search engine. There are many companies, uh, for example, uh, 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 I am associated with a local company here. I mean, it's not a local company, it's a Swedish company uh, by name Hilti, H-I-L-T-I. -I. So they are competitors to Bosch. So you all know uh, Bosch, uh, the uh, hand drills that we use to drill nails on the wall. So uh, Hilti is uh, similar. They also produce uh, not just merely hand drills, they, they, they produce the heavy uh, machineries and drills that are used in uh, uh, constructions big constructions, not just, uh, I mean, uh, uh, home uh, handbooks. So, so they are the biggest competitor for what? So this uh, Swedish company, uh, even though they are, uh, you know, into uh, uh, manufacturing and selling uh, uh, heavy machineries for construction, they also have IT division. So initially the IT division was to, uh, uh, to be self-sufficient. Self-sufficient means they want to develop their own software. For their own, uh, what is a in-house consumption, for their own, uh, you know, supply chain, uh, CRM, uh, invoicing, uh, to support their uh, sales and services and all that. And today, what has happened is uh, uh, it's very competitive. And when you go and put a drill, you want to buy a hand drill and you go and put the internet, maybe in Google. So immediately, you will see a lot of, uh, you know, vendors promoting their own products. And for example, you go into Bosch or Hilti or any other company, after a few seconds, you will see a, you know, a bot popping up, you know, a chat box bot popping up and asking, you know, how can I help you? So uh, initially, this, these chat bots were uh, purely message driven. So now they are moving from message driven, I mean, text driven to voice driven as well. And uh, they, they, they want to pick a conversation such that uh, it not only services uh, new customers, it also want to service existing customers. And they want to see how they can value add uh, to their company by serving existing customers, as well as new customers, as well as their own staff. So these uh, bots are becoming, uh, chatbots are becoming very smart. And chatbot is a very early and a very simple layman example for cognitive computing. Is, is common to computing is not about chatbots alone. I'm just giving one simple uh, example. So there are uh, many other ways by uh, which companies are looking at domain transformation. For example, Air Asia, you have heard about. So uh, today, uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, most of the borders are closed. So more, I mean, most of the flights are not flying today. So these airlines are uh, uh, facing a lot of challenge even in terms of sustaining themselves, not about making profit, to sustain themselves. 
So you would have heard even Airy Tigo and all that they have to you know, reduce their staff. So they have to lay off the staff. So even Air Asia went for heavy layoff and all that. But meantime, what they did was they also did some uh, organizational, uh, I mean, domain uh, uh, transformation. So how in the sense? Um, their in-flight uh, catering service used to be very famous with Air Asia. So they thought, why can't we uh, sell those uh, you know, uh, in-flight catering services to the people? And they, and they actually opened a, a chain of restaurants in uh, prominent places and started selling their uh, in-flight uh, uh, food. In-flight would be not, not the, 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 the leftover in the flight. I don't mean that. So because the flights are not flying anymore. So how to sustain in the business to retain at least the people that they have and they want to remain in the market. So since the flights are not flying, they're not close shop and they might be out of service. So they started selling their uh, uh, in-flight food, the whatever food that was very famous into, into, through these restaurants. And they also started selling their products, uh, which they used to sell uh, in-flight through online. So they opened up. So when you go to AirAsia site, uh, even today, uh, you will see all these products are being advertised. So it is also becoming like an online, uh, like AWS or Amazon online store. You may not be able to buy uh, products product line to the extent of uh, Amazon, but uh, whatever they were doing through uh, you know, in-flight services, they are selling through online now. And they have increased the variety of products as well. So many companies are uh, expanding their business as such. So next one is the organizational transformation. So organizational transformation is, if you want to do business process transformation, business model transformation, domain transformation, then you have to amalgamate in terms of organizational transformation. That is, you have to create a culture of innovation that is customer centric. So you have to have a, a lean uh, hierarchy in terms of uh, uh, organization structure. So while we call it as uh, tall and flat, so more of a flat organization. That's what I mean by lean uh, uh, organization hierarchy and uh, agile uh, workflow and uh, more of uh, what to say uh, autonomy in terms of vision making and more bias, more bias in the sense, more influence towards uh, uh, experimenting and learning. Experimenting because innovation, experimenting, learning uh, is part and parcel of it. So you experiment something and, and you know you see whether the outcome is positive and you from learn from there. It is an iterative process. So that is actually a culture of innovation. So you have to experiment and learn and uh, you know try to uh, uh, be innovative uh, uh, as an organization and look for the future. So this also involves uh, uh, something about uh, what you would have heard about uh, blue uh, ocean strategy. So you create demand uh, for yourself and you create, create demand for your products and services. So that, you know, um, and when I say you create demand uh, for your products and services that are not easily mimicable. Easily mimicable means cannot be reproduced uh, you know, uh, easily. Otherwise, you know, uh, somebody else is going to start the same business. If it can be doing, it can, it can be copied very easily. So that should be the business model. It can be copied, but it may take a long time. By that time, you know, you would have established uh, your own market. You have established your own branding, your own name, and even if other other competitors come. It may be challenging for them to compete with you. So you already have been established. So why these uh, digital transformations are important? So. Some people say they are creating disruption and they call it as disruption, uh, disruptive or disruption uh, technologies. But to me, I normally I call it as transformation. Many people call it as transformation because as I said, uh, this, these uh, emerging trends are not because of opportunity, it is because of necessity. So we have to understand that. And uh, why I'm saying this is, this is because of, uh, it is more of necessity than uh, uh, opportunity is, it is actually changing uh, the way we live. And we can see there is betterment in terms of society, in terms of technological influence. And uh, what has happened is there is a lot of uh, SMEs, small and medium scale uh, enterprises, and the startup companies, especially, you know, without much of uh, investment, they are able to take advantage of these uh, technological trends. And uh, the outcome of it is very threatening, very threatening to traditional firms or legacy firms. So small companies have become challenging for traditional firms because they are very traditional. That's why I use the word legacy. 
So they are very, they have left a legacy and you know, they have been there for many years and uh, they are not revolutionizing how they operate, how they function, you know, in terms of products and services. And some are slowly moving into this uh, digital transformation because they are, they are afraid that they will be missed out. In the industry, they call it as uh, FOMO, FOMO, fear of missing out. But the message here is very clear. Organizations that pursue transformation will find greater success than the others. So, so, so what it means is it is evident that uh, you know, organizations and people have to uh, move towards uh, this digital transformation, taking advantage of these uh, you know, technologies. So uh, we are also seeing something that is also happening. Uh, not because of the pandemic. This this started even before the pandemic started. Um, traditionally, we as humans have been interacting with the physical and digital world separately. So when I say uh, we have been interacting with the physical and digital world separately, means so when we, uh, uh, for example, for a service, uh, a digitalized service, it could be a, an online banking function or online purchase. So we used to uh, interact directly with the machine. So the operations were distinct. So distinctively, you have to make a, an operation to avail a digitized service. It could be anything, right? From banking to you know, paying bills or uh, withdrawing cash, you know, or uh, booking a ticket or buying a product online. So it has to be done, uh, you know, uh, distinctively. But today, what has happened is uh, there is a lot of overlapping uh, between this uh, digital world and physical world, and this is going to increase. So, and, and we are seeing this today, uh, uh, especially with the pandemic, because we were restricted uh, in terms of moving out. So we started uh, purchasing things online. And I'll give you a simple example, uh, uh, how uh, people are also looking at diversification, taking this opportunity. So what you have in India, you know, I mean, you have many uh, e-hailing services. Um, e-hailing means uh, your Uber, Ola, and all that. So Uber here is called as Grab. So we know Grab is mainly for taxi, hiring taxi. So Grab slowly, what happened was here, they, they uh, uh, extended uh, from taxi e-hailing services to uh, uh, food delivery service. And uh, now from food delivery service, they also uh, expanded into uh, transportation service. Transportation means uh, moving goods. So for example, you want to move uh, some goods, or you are moving house, for example, you want to move your goods, household articles. Normally we book a lorry right? or a transportation service. So like, uh, uh, like Uber, uh, booking a taxi, you can book uh, online. And it's very prompt, very cheap, very prompt. You can tell uh, how big lorry you want. Or you, you don't have an idea how big a lorry you want. You tell what uh, articles you want to carry. They, then they advise you what type of vehicle for you to book. And recently what has happened is, they also started selling uh, vegetables and fruits straight from the market. So you, you order today, it will be delivered uh, 12 o'clock uh, 12, 12 before 12 noon the next day. So what they're trying to do is they are trying to take advantage of the infrastructure they have and the people they have, and they see how it can be uh, utilized to the maximum. So they want to maximize the utility of their infrastructure and the manpower. At the same time, they also want to give uh, value added uh, services to the people. So when this happens, what has happened? Where, where come? Where from this? Uh, uh, you know how the uh, physical and digital worlds uh, you know uh, overlap. So many things are uh, happening automatically. So for example, uh, instead of me going to the supermarket uh, buying my milk on a weekly basis, so I know I'm 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 using one carton. One carton means one liter per day. So every week uh, or the weekend I go and buy for the next week. So I can actually uh, book it online, and I can make it as a you know auto uh, service. So every week automatically, you know, the uh, online retailer supplies me, replenishes my book, supplies me, you know, seven cartons. And uh, by buying vegetables are routine, my provisions are routine. So I can automate all this, something like auto billing that you do for your, you know, uh, payment of your telephone bills and all that. So uh, the interaction in terms of uh, a human component, interacting with the communicating in the machine, to perform a digital activity is becoming smaller and smaller. And this, that's why, I mean, I think that's why one of the reasons they call it as a new, a new normal, new way of life has become part of our life. And uh, 
as i said this this started happening even before the pandemic but after the pandemic we are seeing in a, in a in a heavier concentration and uh, uh, the industry is looking at this is going to increase more time and uh, in terms of uh, uh, organization they also have named this as a model so you all know uh, you have heard about brick and mortal uh, uh, companies so brick and mortal company means you have a physical office and airbnb uh, grab or lot and all that are good examples uh, they don't have any brick and mortal company right so so what has happened is um, today they call it as uh, bricks and clicks so a lot of uh, uh, for example uh, garment stores like at and them zara and all that uh, international uh, market chains in garments they started closing shop because uh, they occupy a huge uh, physical space rental so maintenance sustainability was a big challenge competition also was a big challenge because there were many online stores selling the same uh, garments and all that so what has happened is they're not simply close shop so they reduced the number of physical stores and started uh, also selling products online and that's what we are doing today uh, you know uh, in terms of education as well so we in tailors university i'm not trying, i'm trying to promote tailors university here but we in tailors university also call this as bricks and clicks because we have uh, quite a substantial number of international students so all our classes in parallel can be uh, you know uh, followed by the international students and when uh, when the when the restrictions are less we have the uh, lab sessions and tutorial sessions face to face only our lectures will be online so when we still do uh, our labs and uh, practicals or tutorials uh, face to face parallelly international students can connect to us online because of travel restrictions they cannot uh, you know, come to malaysia so in the industry i just give you an example so in the industry they call this as the uh, bricks and clicks model so you have a, a you know a physical interaction maybe in a face to face enclosure like in a classroom or a physical store at the same time you sell the same product or services online as well so you see how uh, you know the things are evolving so that's why there is an increasing lap uh, overlap in terms of the uh, physical world and digital world and, and this is going to uh, expected to increase and uh, this change will change the work i mean the way we work we learn and we live as humans and what this has to do with this this is going to create a lot of uh, opportunities so so we are looking in terms of two uh, perspectives two prong approach there is uh, we have uh, digital transformation happening we have fusion of technologies happening and uh, we should not forget all these are happening uh, uh, with the help of these uh, emerging trends or uh, emerging uh, technologies so so what is uh, i'm coming to the conclusion now so measure of intelligence the ability to change as mentioned by einstein and uh, intelligence is the ability to adapt to change stephen hawking so both are talking about change and uh, we just now i also talked about uh, the change that is happening in terms of fusion of technologies uh, transformation uh, in terms of technologies and uh, i mentioned that it is making a lot of uh, socio economic impact uh, in terms of uh, uh, business uh, in terms of governance right in terms of uh, learning and in terms of uh, the way of living as well okay all these uh, trending technologies offer promising career and research potential for now as well as the foreseeable uh, future so the message is if we could embrace at the early stages of these trending uh, technologies we will be able to position ourselves for success for not only for now also for the future so uh, all those uh, research scholars post graduates by thought program or by research program so you should take up uh, any one of these technologies because all these are at the very early stage so if you if you jump into the wagon at the very early stage you will be definitely able to position yourself to success for now as well as for the future because this is going to this is going to be the trend uh, for the uh, near future as well as for the far future that's my message and that's how i i, I thought of uh, connecting uh, your theme uh, or the title of the conference uh, emerging trends in uh, computing uh, and uh, how uh, this impacts today the society 
the community and the business world and what this has for us in terms of our future, future and future prospects. So with that, uh, I thank the organizing uh, committee of the conference for this opportunity. Uh, glad to be here. And uh, I uh, wish that uh, you all had a fruitful uh, conference. And I also wish that uh, this uh, conference doesn't end this year and continues in the uh, future. Uh, every, uh, every year coming out with your own uh, uh, index journal and all that. My best wishes and good luck to the entire organizing team and all the participants. Have a good evening. Best wishes. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Rajak Kumar Murugesan. Yes. We are really happy to uh, listen to your uh, uh, detailed lecture. It was very useful for all of us. And uh, and that's a special note about you. Because uh, most of uh, our faculty members may not know that uh, you are uh, uh, the illustrious alumnus of a college. It's nice that you have uh, given a detailed talk about the current trends and uh, the innovative things regarding the transformation in the digital world. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rajkumar. Keep in touch with us. We will make you of your uh, expertise in future. God bless you. Thank you. Definitely. Thanks. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow, says Melody Beard. It's my pleasure to invite Dr. B. Satish Kumar sir to offer the word of thanks. Good evening, all. I feel honored and privileged to get the opportunity to propose a vote of thanks on this special day. Today, we have hosted the international conference in our college with around 100 delegates and nearly 60 participating research scholars and academicians. On behalf of our management and computer science department, I convey my regards and hearty thanks to our chief guest, Mr. Somendu Gaura, for his valuable speech. And my honest thanks is due to the plenary speaker, Mr. Ramkumar Rajagopalan, Senior Director, Regional Head, Oracle Financial Services, Bangalore. And also a special thanks to the other plenary speaker, Dr. Pedro Chalaya, Vice President and Chief Architect, Reliance Geo Platform, Bangalore. I like to thank our uh, beloved principal, Dr. D. Paul Dayabur, sir, for his constant support and love towards our department. My sincere thanks are due for our beloved head, Dr. J.G.R. Satyaji sir, head of the Department of Computer Science, AIDA, coordinator of Computer Science, IT department, and dean of staff and students welfare. I record my sincere thanks to Dr. Rajkumar, head of the Department of Computer Science, head Department of Data Science and Team for International Relations. A nice valediction given by Dr. Rajkumar Murugesan, head of research faculty of innovation and technology, Taylor University, Malaysia. Thanks, sir. I would like to thank our near and dear head, Dr. G. Sogar Smiles David, head self financing section two and Associate Dean of International Relations. I register my sincere thanks to the Organizing Secretary, Dr. B. Gayatri, Assistant Professor of Department of Computer Science, Ship 2. I am very happy to thank all my faculty colleagues and also all paper presenters from various colleges and universities. A yes, special thanks to all IT support friends and the non-teaching fraternity for rendering their fullest support for making this conference a grand success. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. So, dear positive participants, uh, the feedback link is already posted in the chat box. Uh, please fill up the uh, feedback link. Your uh, feedback will be helpful for us for the upcoming events. And uh, once again, we are uh, thanking you for uh, your support. And you are almost you spent the whole day with us okay, through this uh, international conference. And we are signing off here. With the hope that we will again meet at IVCET 2021. Thank you once again. Bye bye.